Okay, so let's start my presentation. I don't have much time, unfortunately. I have lots of slides for the last three minutes. So yeah, thanks for coming for my presentation. And I'm going to be talking about CK Editor 5 plugin development uh, from scratch. Uh, my name is Nikolai. I'm a senior Drupal developer in Evolving Web. And uh, funny thing is I'm a backend developer. I'm talking about front-end technology, but I'll, I'll tell you how, how it happened. Uh, so, a couple of words about our company. We are Evolving Web. We are the full service agency from Montreal. We've been with Drupal for 15 years plus, I think. I personally worked with Drupal for like 10 and maybe 11 years. I remember that in my early years, I definitely stumbled over some blogs, blog posts, or videos from Evolving Web. So, we have like a variety of plans across Canada and the US. Uh, so, we're going to be talking about uh, CK5 plugin development, I'll give some context uh, how exactly I got into this. Uh, I assume that uh, all of us, most of us are Drupal developers, so we'll, we'll start from a familiar part, from Drupal, how we connect the plugin to Drupal. We'll discuss the tools that we use for development and we will dive into the plugin structure. Uh, namely the editing plugin, UI plugin, and the comment. I will be mentioning those three a lot. And here I want to make a little remark that uh, I call them plugins because they instantiate the plugin class, editing and UI, but think about them as the part of, the, of our plugin. Our plugin is called demo link. And by the way, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Let me just show you and the website. So I'll try to create the basic page, switch to full HTML. There is this button which by coincidence corresponds to the symbol on my t-shirt and I click it, I see three input fields, text file extension and the URL. I put some Dummy values. I hit submit. I see this button popped up. I can click the source. And that's almost the same as the built in link plugin. I decided to go for a simple solution here. The only difference is that it has two child elements it has span class text and it has small class file extension for the file extension. Okay, that's how it looks. Now let's get back to the slides. Uh, do the slideshow. Uh, so yeah, that's the repo of my plugin. If you want to take a picture, you can do that and I can put it in your composer and see the full code and how it works like on the real project. I'll wait for a couple of seconds if you want to do that. That's my personal repo. A bit of acknowledgement to myself rather than involving web. So yeah, let's let's move on. Uh, some context: uh, migration from CK Editor four. I listed a few quotes from CK Editor five documentation. Let me read them out. CK Editor five is a rich text editor with MVC infrastructure custom in data model and virtual DOM compared to its predecessor. CK Editor five should be considered a totally new editor. And I'll ask you to focus on this MVC architecture. Part. And for me, it, I would say it's more like MVC like or MVC ish because it definitely has model and view. We'll be talking about model of view a lot. And if you are familiar with the MVC concept with PHP framework, it would be easier for you to, to get the concept in CK Editor. That's basically the same thing. View is how we render data, model is how we store data and operate in it. Uh, every single aspect of it, CK Editor 5, was redesigned. Integration features, data, and model, and API, I cannot agree more. It definitely was the redesign. There is no automatic solution for migrating. That's the reason why we opened it here. And any custom plugin for CK04 will not be compatible with the CK05. Their implementation will be different and will require rewriting them from scratch. That's exactly how they put it in the documentation, which they find funny. And that's how I got into uh, CK05. I was updating one of our sites from Drupal 9 to Drupal 10, and Drupal 10 does not support CK4. CK5 is the only support solution for Drupal 10, and uh, we figured out that we have a number of uh, 
custom plugins that the client wanted to keep. And some of them were quite complex, some of them were quite like, less complex, some of them were replaceable with new country, but some of them required this development from scratch, and that's the experience I want to share with you here today. Uh, so, how we define the plugin in Drupal? Uh, we start from Cicada 5 YAML file. So that's the basically YAML file where we just uh, describe, define things. Namely, uh, the plugin itself, the Drupal library which would serve this plugin, the toolbar button, and the parent HTML element. Parent HTML element for most of the plugins, if not all of them, is the paragraph. It's the element we want to attach our plugin to our link in our case too. Uh, then the library, uh, Drupal library, nothing fancy about that. That's the code, the JS code minified in Webpack, and the source for this code, the source folder that uh, creates this minified uh, Webpack JavaScript file. Uh, Ckater5 YAML file. Uh, you can follow the links in the docs in the Drupal Torp to basically see all the possible options that you can specify. Here I kept uh, all, the, all the essentials, the bare minimum, let's say. And it, we can divide it like logic into parts, Cicator 5 part and Drupal part. In Cicator 5, we basically define our plugin. We let Drupal know that it exists. And the first part before the dot, I believe, that's the folder name, and the second part is the class name. Uh, in Drupal part, we give a like, human readable name, uh, we specify the library, the Drupal library that would serve the plugin, and if it's in, is it okay? You can see that? Good. Uh, I guess I'm not looking here. Uh, then we define the toolbar button, so we have not created that yet, we just define the name, and we define this uh, parent HTML element, which would be paragraph uh, tools. Uh, Webpack is the first. Uh, what is worth mentioning here is that config file is pretty much the same across all of the uh, CK5 plugins I personally looked into. So the file structure is the same. You don't need any custom uh, code in the config. So you basically save the copy it over from somewhere else. Here I listed the example CK or diff uh, manager. Next thing is more interesting. It's a Drupal module, Cicator 5 DevTools module, and it comes uh, with the first the sub module, uh, which implements the example from Cicator 5 documentation called the block widget. Uh, it implements it within Drupal. And if you look at the code of many uh, country modules uh, that serve for Cicator 5 plugins, you see that all of them derive more. Mo most of them derived from this plugin, just the code structures is the same. So that's that's a good starting point. And secondly, it goes, it comes with the Cicator 5 inspector. That's the tool to visualize the model. Uh, view, we have model in the view. View is the HTML, but model is something else. And it's handy to actually see that. That's how it looks like. So that's the example of our link. It has to a child elements, text, and file extension, and it has the model. It's not HTML, it's something like, let's say, abstract representation. It has the parent element called demo link, it has to attribute demo link class and demo link URL, and it has two uh, child elements, demo link text, demo link file extension. There is no way to s visually see that uh, aside from uh, using this editor, and I find it quite handy. It helped me like a lot in development. So yeah, that's a nice way just to debug and to see what you're actually doing with the model. So let's have a look at the plugin structure once again. Uh, we have the build folder, we have the source folder. The build folder is the minified fi file, the source folder is the source. And in the source folder we have the index.js, which is the entry point. Uh, and we have editing plugin, UI plugin, and, and the comment. I said that we'll be mentioning them a lot. Uh, that's the convention that uh, basically we agreed to have. We agreed to break our plugin into the, those three parts. And uh, aside from that, we can have other files, just like we are free to structure our applications in the way that we want to structure. But those necessary things is editing UI and the comment. 
Okay. What they are. Editing plugin is responsible for the model, so it works with the model. It defines the elements hierarchy. So in our case, we have the parent element and we have two child elements, and the parent element has two attributes. So we define that in the editing plugin. Uh, the next thing that we do in the editing plugin, we define the conversion, or how the data gets converted from one level to another, from the abstract level to HTML, from model to view, and back. So it's, think about that as kind of mapping. It's not necessarily one, like one-to-one -one mapping, but uh, it could be what you make it to be. So you are free to write your own logic here. I have examples in my slides. Uh, UI plugin, it provides three, us with three th things. Uh, it creates a toolbar button first, the button that we click to instantiate our plugin. Uh, when we click the button, we see the form, so we also write this form in the UI plugin, and we handle the selection. The selection in the CKD05 context, it's like I mentioned, you have the editor, you have text, you have image, you have a you know, table, you have somewhere in the bottom line in the corner of the instance of our plugin and our plugin should uh, know uh, which part of the, let's say we select something, something in the editor and our plugin should be mindful if we selected the instance of our plugin or we selected some, something else and we should react on the selection if we selected our plugin. And the, lastly it's the comment, comment modifies the element, it works with the model, it actually the thing that where we update the model. I like to think about that uh, as uh, Drupal form state object in our Drupal form API. That's basically a storage for the current state of the form. And the comment in CKDR5 is in a way similar. It stores the current state of our plugin, our current values, and something else, so some other properties. But yeah, it stores the values. Okay, index.js, our entry point, which technically could be the only file in the application, but again, the convention is to break it into editing and UI part. We call comment from somewhere else. For now, we just require editing and we, we require the UI plugin and we basically give it a name, demo link, and that's what we do. Editing plugin, as I said, uh, First is hierarchy, second is the rules how to convert from model to the view and back. Model and view. Uh, model is the abstract level of data representation. In, if you read the docs, if you read the CKTR5 docs, they specify that uh, in contrary to CKTR4, uh, the 5 version w operates on the model level layer. So when you have your plugin instantiated, you have your link and you are editing your link, you edit in the model. If you don't edit HTML directly, you modify the model. Uh, and model may not correspond to HTML one-to-one. -one. In our case, it does, uh, which means that we have like two attributes model that corresponds to two attributes in HTML, like a uh, class and href. In model, we have demo link class, demo link URL, and we have uh, two ch child elements, and we have to child elements in HTML as well. But if you need, uh, let's say, create third attribute to a model, let's say icon, uh, this icon could uh, could result in a new class for our HTML element, and let's say for a new child element like icon tag or something like that. And you are free to add any kind of complexion in here. The point being is that model is not HTML. It, it should it not necessarily replicate the same structure. Uh, view, view. I I sometimes call view HTML here because we are working with the website context. But view could be something else. That's the abstraction on, on top of the HTML. Actually, that's the class. And uh, like in theory, it could be Markdown. It could be XML. But we never use it. We use HTML. So I call it HTML for simplicity, not. Uh, uh, not to over -compli complicate things. And uh, view might be different for the end user and the content user. I'm a content editor. I will be showcasing that a little bit later, but the point is that we want to, we, we 
are able to display some extra things when for the content editor when they are editing our plugin in the editor and not to display those things for the end user like I know show to to deep or highlight the text in I know yellow or something like that we can we can define different rules for the content editor and for the end user uh, same thing that I mentioned <laughs> before but in proper terms uh, so this hierarchy is called schema it, it resembles the schema JSON if you're familiar with the JSON schema so that's where we define how the elements are nested and their allowed attributes uh, those rules how model gets translated to the view and back view to the model is called conversion uh, view to model is the upcast conversion and uh, model to view is the downcast conversion downcast conversion uh, we can break it into data pipeline and editing pipeline. Data pipeline is how the end user sees the HTML. Editing pipeline is how the content editor sees the HTML. If we do not want to customize content uh, editor HTML, we just go with data pipeline. We neglect editing pipeline. That's fine. That's what we do in our example. And third thing is that it binds the comment to the editor, So, which means that we instantiate the common object and we assign this to one of the editor object's proper properties. Editor object is the object always accessible in Secret 5. Uh, finally, some example. Uh, let me just read through the code. And that's how I define schema for our demo link plugin. First is the parent element. We register demo link element. We inherit all the properties from uh, some built-in in CKAT or inline object element, just because we don't want to write all of them in our custom plugin. And we override only those that we need. So we say that we allow, allow only two, ad, two attributes, demo link URL and demo link class. Nothing else is, uh, is allowed as an attribute for our element. And we allow in a similar way only to children demo link text and demo link file extension. Uh, as an example, uh, we, yeah, as an example here, we define schema for the demo link text. Uh, it's interesting here that we say that it's allowed only in the demo link and it cannot just exist by itself somewhere else. It's only a child element of the parent element of the demo link uh, element. It allows all the content of the uh, blog that's something built in. In Secator 5, it basically goes uh, for all the text elements. And this limit property it stands for uh, some, it affects the selection. It means that selection that uh, and, uh, started somewhere else, it could not end in the middle of the element, something like this. It goes for uh, the text elements. So model and view again, but with an example that how our plugin looks like. Uh, here are some quotes from the docs that describe both uh, model and view as DOM-like structures, and they are DOM-like structures, but uh, the point here is that they are not similar. So view in that case is just HTML. As I said, that we can think about that as HTML, but that in fact that's the abstraction on top of the HTML and model it resembles the HTML, but it's, it's a bit different. Yeah, I already showed the model before, and that's how it corresponds to the, to the view. So demo link file extension, it uh, gets translated to the like, small element, and demo link text, it becomes span. So that's basically the only difference between children. All right, upcasting. Upcasting, that's the process of uh, creating model from the view. When it happens, it happens when, imagine you copied the raw HTML that by chance inclu uh, includes our plugin, like the same structure as our plugin defines this one, this HTML, you just copy it from somewhere else and you hit the source button in Secator and you pass it. So at this moment, Secator has HTML. Then it creates the data view, this, this view abstraction view layer out of the HTML. Then it goes through the process of upcast conversion. That's the rules that we define in your plugin. How, you, how exactly you want to create the model from your view. And when this process is done, the model becomes the editor state, which means that you operate on the model. When you are editing your link, it means that you're editing the model. So we, we based it our 
Pro HTML, it went through the process and it became Maro. Uh, Downcasting, a bit more complex here, is the opposite process from model to view. When it happens, it happens when you are editing. You already have the element in the or you are editing. You are editing the model, but you need to update the view accordingly. You need to show the HTML to your user for content in that case. Uh, so two pipelines, as I said, we are not using this pipeline in my example, but that's for content editor specifically, that's for the end user. Uh, it goes through the pipeline. Uh, pipeline, it means that you basically specify the mapping in your code. You take the input, uh, you take the model, and the output is the view. I'll show the example of the code, but uh, yeah, the point here is that we have the model in the input, and we produce the view as the output in here. Uh, so that's the example of the code, that's the conversion, it's uh, first uh, from the top to the bottom, it's a view to model, uh, so we are app casting, and we have our input is spanned with the class text, and uh, with <coughs> Cicator sees that it gets spanned with the class text, and it creates demo in test model element out of it, so you have the model. And the opposite process, uh, that input is the model, and the output is the span with the class text. Of course, it's a very simple example, and you may insert more logic when you need it to. I'll pay your attention on this element to element. That's the conversion helper, one of the conversion helpers of uh, CK editor. Another one would be attribute to attribute. Uh, we don't use it that often as element to element. We use it only if we can, because we can uh, cast elements, uh, cast attributes of elements in this element to element version. But in some cases, we need to separate conversion for attributes. So we have it's the app cast. So it's view HTML to the model to the abstract representation. We have a with the href attribute and. As the outcome, we have the demo link URL. That's the attribute of our, our demo link uh, element. Why we need that? We need that not to mess up with the built-in link uh, plugin in CK Editor. Like, because sometimes like, you need to say explicitly that uh, this element, these attributes, sorry, it belongs to your plugin, not to anything else. Because other plugins, links, could have href and they, in fact they will have HF, everything that will have this attribute and not to mess up it means that uh, if you paste it let's say raw html and then in the source like mode then you hit the source button and you don't see your href in your plugin you see it attached to some other link and like that so you need to specifically say that hey that uh, that attribute belongs to my plugin that's it for the editing part, uh, then UI plugin. UI plugin does three things. Uh, it defines the toolbar button, it defines the form that is called by clicking the toolbar button, and it handles the selection. So the init method of, uh, you can see exactly those things in the init method of the UI plugin. The first line is when we are using this balloon object. Balloon is this pop-up thing in Secretor 5. We are when we are shown out our form, which it means that we are attaching the form to the balloon. Uh, toolbar button. I'll just read through the code. First, that we do, we instantiate the button view object that's uh, it's used for anything which resembles the button secretor. It could be toolbar button, could be a button in the form, pretty much everything like clickable. Uh, so we give it a name. Uh, we give it an icon. The icon is the included SVG file, demo link icon in here. And uh, we say that we want to display the tooltip. We load the comment from the editor and uh, we want to bind some property from the properties from the comment to the toolbar button, namely is enabled, is on. So when the uh, button is not enabled, it's like grayed out. So let's say you click the source button in the CK editor and you don't want to use your plugin when you are in the source mode, right? So you want it to be grayed out. And it, it corresponds one to one to the similar property in the, in the comment. 
and uh, another one is on, it's when you're editing the plugin and your button could be highlighted in blue that is on. And again, you just check if the comment has the value and you translate it into in Boolean and then you, you decide who, who, whether or not you want to highlight your uh, toolbar button blue. And the last thing that we do is that we say that on the execute uh, callback, we want to show the UI, meaning we want to show the UV form, we want to attach it to the balloon. Uh, but we need to create this form first. And here, like my personal impression is that CK05 is way more low level than, let's say, form API in Drupal or any other stuff in Drupal. So you need to actually program in your custom code things which you maybe sometimes would expect to be built in. So uh, what I mean here, I mean is that uh, you can see I use this create input me uh, method as uh, something just uh, boilerplate code wrapper. I don't want to repeat this create input stuff over and over again. And you can find like many examples of that in the doc documentation. I'm not showcasing it in this presentation, but it uh, runs all this like boilerplate to create the form elements. We have three of them, text input, file, extension input, and URL input. We have two buttons, save button and the cancel button. We specify the type of the submit button, so save button would submit the form, and we uh, delegate the cancel uh, event to the execute callback of the cancel button to actually cancel the, the form. Then we create the collection of those elements. We take these three elements, we create the collection out of them, and we pass them to the template. It's not a trick template, it's a CK for five template. Again, that's well of plate, I collapsed it, but I want to showcase the, the logic of what we do. I encourage you to check out the review. So now we just created the form. Uh, form class, we just like define the form class, now we need to instantiate. Uh, we create a new form view, so we instantiated the class, we define the submit callback, so on, on our submit, when we submit the form, we just grab those three fields and we pass those values to the comment, to the execute method of the comment. So since now on comment is responsible, what the form does, it just grabs the values and passes them to the comment. Then we hide the UI, we don't want to show it anymore. If the user click cancel, we just hide the UI, we don't pass the values. If the user clicked outside of the form, somewhere like in a random place in the editor or just in the page, we call this click outside handler uh, function, it's something built in CK editor, and what we do, we specify the callback, we hide the UI. Uh, so, now we instantiated the form, and uh, our form here, it's, it's sort of like a single tongue. So we have just one object, uh, and we pass new values to the same object over and over again. If we have uh, no 10 links, and we edit so the first link, the third link, the fourth link, it would not create this new form object over and over again. We just pass the values of this plugin taken from the model to the, to the form to the only form. Uh, so how we do that? Uh, first, we add the form to the balloon. So we show the form. Uh, it happens when the user created edit. Let's say they clicked on the, so they clicked on the link and they, sh they see the form. So that, that's what happens. Uh, we load the comment. We uh, get the values from the comment. So here I created some sort of uh, map in between the names of, yeah, maybe it's too small, sorry about that. So, yeah, I'll just explain it. So, uh, here I'm loading the values from the common and I pass it to the form. So, if uh, the common does not have a corresponding value, the method is over there, then we don't pass anything to the form, basically. If we are dealing with the demo in URL, uh, you don't want to show just the empty value for the URL on some default placeholder, which is the singular, I forgot to call that in English, for the anchors, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the default value for the URL. For other uh, fields, we we just, uh, if it's empty, it's empty. If it's not empty, we load the value from the comment. 
and then we uh, call the focus event for focus method for the form, which means that it would focus the first input element on the top. We will give it a focus event selection. Uh, in this method, basically what we want to do, we want to uh, define the behavior of what will happen if the user selected this well, area, let dimension, uh, between the last letter in the link and the next play space, the like so-called boundary called after touch in CK2, and there is like respectively before touch. So what uh, will, will happen? Should we select this element or should we select the parent element? It's ancestor mean outside the element, the paragraph. Uh, so we want to actually like program this. Like we want to explicitly say what's going to happen. Uh, so first, we get our selection. Uh, second, we check if our element, demo link element, if it falls into this selection. So if we selected our element, maybe we selected something else. If we selected something else, we hide the UI and we return nothing. If we selected our element, we, we need to show the UI, we need to show the form. Uh, then we, we need to understand where exactly we are, where our cursor is. Uh, we need uh, to get the position before and position after the cursor. It's a bit complicated. It's how CKDR5 works. So we get we got those positions before and after cursor. Uh, then we need to, to get those uh, before touch and after touch. We need to uh, we need to calculate the boundaries of our link basically. And to do that, we need to uh, it could have two child elements: the mobile text and the mobile file extension. But we may or may not have the extension part. So in this part of the code, we are going through the elements child elements of the demo link to see if we have this file extension. If we have it, good. So it's our last element. If we don't have it, our last element is our first element, which is text. Uh, based on that, we uh, define our before touch and after touch. And uh, uh, here is the most interesting part. To get. If uh, we hit this before touch or after touch, we want to set the selection. We, want, we don't want it to be in our element. We want it to be outside. Because otherwise, if we just hit the arrow buttons, like right or left, and we reach the boundary, it will just stay in the boundary of the element forever. And we want to go to go further. And yeah, that's that's what I mean by low level. And uh, we need to specify that if we reach this boundary, we just want to move the selection out of the element. We just want to move it to the uh, parent paragraph. Common. Uh, common is the main way to manipulate the editor content in the state. So yeah, we want to read it out. It's the our form state, form state uh, Drupal object. It has values of the form, current state of the form. It has other properties. We look into is enabled and is on properties, and uh, uh, it has two methods, refresh and execute. Refresh, it uh, updates the comment itself based on the model. So we have the model, when we are editing the link, we are editing the model, keep it in mind, and we want to update the comment values respectively. The execute is the opposite, is that we get the new values from the form, when the user uh, submits the form, but the content editor submits the form, we get the new values, and we want to update the state of the comment accordingly. The code. And first, refresh model. Here we are updating the uh, the model. So we have our fresh values in the comment, but our model is not updated just yet. It. Uh, yeah, it happens, for example, when you pass the row HTML. So uh, for this example in particular, we want to say that our toolbar button would be always enabled because this property here is bound to the toolbar button. Uh, then we instantiate the value. Uh, the value is this like form, state, storage. I'm trying to translate to Drupal language from here. Uh, so first what we do, we get our selection. 
we check if our if in this selection is the instance of our demo link plugin because maybe we selected something else. Uh, if it's, we selected something else, we just return. If we select demo link uh, plugin, we instantiate the empty object for its values because we're gonna recreate these values based on the model values in the model. So first we are dealing with the attributes. Uh, we get the attributes from the model, and we assign the attribute value to be to the value property of the comment. So basically, not here we are recording uh, our model attributes into the comment. Same thing with uh, with the child elements. We look through the child elements of the model. We have two of them. Uh, we get their name, and we get their Values and if it's not empty, we don't need empty values. We assign those values uh, values to the comment. So at this state, our comment is up to date, and we can use it like in in other. <laughs> we can use it in editing plugin, in UI plugin, in any other parts of the code. Uh, here, what happens when user submits the form? Remember, I showed you before in previous slides and the UI plugin part that when the user submits the form, uh, the content editor submits the form, so read the new values, it, uh, get, they get passed into the execute method of the comment. So at this, at this point, we want to update the model, because the model is the layer we are operating on in CKP5. Uh, first of all, we try to find the, that's the helper function, but to just explain what it does, it, it finds the, uh, demo link element in this selection. So if we haven't found that, it means that we need to create it because at this point we are certain that we are dealing with the element. Uh, user submitted the form. If the element is not there, it means that's, uh, that the insert operation, we want to insert a new one. If they are editing the form, it means that we don't have to insert anything, we just edit what we have. So if we haven't found anything, we create a new element in the model, it, it's very created with the model, and we set the is new flag. Uh, in this helper function, we made the modifications to the model. I'll, I'll show it in the next slide. And if we are dealing with the new, uh, with the new element we inserted, we add it to the model. If we don't, we don't need it, because it's already in the model. So, a deeper look into this edit element. Uh, that's just a helper function I created to not repeat the code. Uh, first, what we do, we recreate the, we basically remove everything from the model and then we recreate the attributes and the elements one by one. Why we do that? We, we want to do that to follow the proper order. So we want the text uh, child element to go first and the file extension to go next. We don't want file extension to be before the text. Uh, so first, attributes. Uh, quite easy, we have the values, we pass those values on the form, uh, form submit originally. So first we uh, create the demo link URL property. We just take it from the values. Uh, our class is static, it's always demo link, we just assign it here. And we pass those attributes, we write them into the model, writer set attributes method does that. Then I collect the names of the child elements and then here I basically recreate this model child elements and here yeah it's kind of like code which calls other code calls other code it's in the repo unfortunately I don't think it makes sense to show you the slides but I'm creating those um, <coughs> child elements one by one demo and text and link file extension. And then I add those child elements to the parent element. Writer append demo link text appended to the parent element. Then the same goes for the demo link extension. So at this moment, this code happens when the user submitted the form and the values from the form they, they passed to the model. So our model is updated. And I'm afraid that's it. I 
hope it wasn't that overwhelming. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Actually, yeah, I have a question. Um, so how, do, do you have a resource or something that you would recommend that would help guide someone through the conversion of a CK Editor 4 to CK Editor 5? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The second point would be, I showed that in my slides, this, uh, yeah. the, ah, okay, okay, I'll, yeah, this uh, CK Editor 5 DevTools, that's the Drupal module, and um, it has, it, it's valuable because it has the sub module that uh, basically provides you with the example. They took the example from CK Editor 5 official docs. CK Editor 5 official docs, they have three examples. So I would recommend looking into each of them. And they took one of them, I, I believe the most complex, complex one, and uh, they basically adjusted it to be used in Drupal. So you already have the plugin, it's there. What else? What also you can use, of course, the docs, but again, as more you dive into cicators, more the docs make sense, because at first I found myself kind of hard to see where you start. You have all those like uh, descriptions, definitions of like how a particular uh, event or property works, but you don't really know what to do with that. So the example would be a good, good thing. You can also look into simple, uh, Contrib or core plugins. Like I personally looked into CK Editor Accordion module, uh, CK Editor Diff Manager module, something simple that which is already there, uh, which does not have lots of options, uh, very I don't know complex structure. Something more or less like simple, so you can see different examples of different implementation of this conversion, of schema I was talking about. So some of them are complex, some of them are not that complex, but yeah, that what I would it's, it seems pretty complicated, John, because that's a that's a small plugin that you just demonstrated and that's yes. there's a lot in there. That that's a simplified plugin. The actual yeah. plugin that we develop for, for the client it makes more sense. It's it der yeah. derives more from the basic link. It has lots of like uh, elements to configure and stuff like that, but that's the principle. Right. right. So. Thank you. Do you have any other recommendations for plugins for CK Editor 5 that are already out there as modules, contrib modules for uh, Drupal? Kind of like that CK Editor accordion, I didn't actually know about that uh, previously. Yeah, the thing is that they are getting updated and created quite rapidly you know, to keep an eye on them. Because like the first thing that I did for CK Editor was the anchor module. So the, yes. there was they just updated that like a few months ago. Yeah. See see that was how, after ten. That's how it works. So yeah, I I worked on like I started from creating one that where it started and it was quite simple. It was kind of good use case for learning. I started working on that and I found that uh, Northern like X digital equipment, they they published it somewhere in their GitLab, uh, GitHub. So it was already there. So I took that module and uh, I integrated it with Drupal. So I basically copied it over in my custom Drupal module and it kind of worked. Uh, and then it uh, got released in Drupal at work. So it's kind of hard to tell, to be honest. Uh, the the useful module. I, it's a bit different from what I explained. It's called CK Editor 5 Embedded Content. It, it worth its pre pre the presentation of its own, to be honest, but it allows you to, to display tweak templates in CK Editor 5. And in this tweak templates, you can use whatever you want. Could be entities, could be any custom stuff. So yeah, that's worth the check. The shortcoming would be that it's not very good for inline uh, objects like this link. For example, for the inline stuff, I would go for the custom implementation for any stuff which is an end block, which like takes the whole width of the of the editor. Maybe it's worth to consider the five embedded content module. You wanna, if you do that, uh, match it up with full screen? Is full screen? That you can see the whole. We found that one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really helpful. Clients love that one. Because between four and five, that got removed and maximized, yeah. got tossed out yeah. and turned into a big feature, right? Yeah. So I go on, that's now very good, yeah. Is there a page that kind of points to all of these? Like just trying to keep track of 
you know, like the whole list, list kind of the outloader kind of does. With there was stuff. one. I haven't looked into it's that for date. quite a while. There was one. There was one, but it's, it's still out of date, I think. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it it's be. evolving very quickly. Very updated so for some reason. On the yeah. span of uh, <laughs> two weeks, I think, with this Anchor module, I went from the like, from developing it myself to actually reuse it that someone else developed. It was like, like really two weeks in between. Oh, wow. So, yeah, just kind of normalized. Well, thank you. Given the color button is switching so much, this kind of like three panels right now, and you need to just be able to. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.